So you've heard about 16-bit, 12-bit, 10-bit, and even 8-bit. By the end of this video, you're gonna know all about 16, 12, 10, 8 bit, the differences between them, and how to maximize your shooting through post production workflow for color and data. So, starting with the data elephant, let's talk about 16 bits and work our way down. The Red Raw codec is a 16 bit container codec, and it contains a ton of color information. When it comes to bit depth, we're not talking about 8 to 10 to 12 to 16, we're talking about 2 to the power of 8, 2 to the power of 10, and 2 to the power of 12 for 12 bit, what those numbers mean is number of reference points and subtle gradations per color channel of red, green, and blue. So the small recap there, 8 bit means 16.7 million colors. When you see that number of monitors, don't get excited. 10 bit is 1.03 billion colors, which is great, but again, that's more of an export format not a capture format if you can manage it and you will absolutely see and feel the difference through your process. And the numbers get even crazier as you get into 12 and 16 bit. I don't have those off the top of my head. I may even put it up on the screen here because the numbers just get absolutely bananas huge and like beyond what humans can even comprehend. So why would you want to record in 16 bit? Of course, the more color you have, the better. However, even on Ari's website, they explain that like no one really needs 16-bit information and is sort of clunky. Now looking at the actual data, there's a difference between linear and log. 16-bit linear color data is functionally identical to 12-bit log, especially when it's 16-bit data housed within a 12-bit log file. This is how the Ari raw 12-bit MXFs work. This is also how Black Magic's B Raw works. And you can even see inside of Resolve, when you look at this footage, it will say it's 16 bit. You will also be able to see in B Raw, it says it's 16 bit. Even though we know it's a 12 bit codec, what's happening is we're taking 16 bit data, we are logarithmically compressing it into a 12 bit container to be decompressed later back to 16 bits. For those of you who don't know, that's actually what codec stands for codec is compression decompression. That kind of blew my mind when I learned it. That's You can take that and sell that at the next filmmaker gathering. It's going to blow everyone's minds too. People just don't know this. I didn't for the longest time and I was like, but what? Moving on to some information about the 12-bit B-RAW codec. Again, this is 16-bit data just like the red and it's been compressed into a 12-bit codec to be decompressed later back into the 16-bit color space. As you go from 12-bit to 10-bit, you're getting closer to the things that you're actually losing, which is why when you record ProRes, which is 10-bit, everything is baked in. You can't make changes in post like color balance via the Kelvin setting. You can't make these decisions later. Also, your ISO setting in your camera, you'll notice that when you shoot RAW, whether you're shooting Red RAW or B RAW or whatever have you, you can change your ISO in post because, again, all the information that you're recording in a RAW codec is unprocessed, literally by definition, raw <laughs> sensor data. Now, specifically with the Black Magics, what you're getting is a partially demosaic color pass and information. So you're not totally unprocessed, but the sweet spot has honestly been found. You'll actually get 20 or 30 and sometimes even up to 80% more record times in B-RAW at the exact same resolution, exact same frame rates, and again, same 16-bit data, but more efficiently compressed than decompressed later. It's about time that someone's figured out how to take that really nice 16-bit data and put it in a container that's about the same size as a 10-bit codec. Now you can see here when we're actually comparing the Red Komodo footage in its native 16-bit RAW to the Blackmagic Pocket 6K in its native 12-bit RAW, the information and the image quality are pretty freaking comparable. Now, there are some subtle differences in the color, and I do want to point out that the Blackmagic is actually better at perceiving the difference between the skin tone of our model and the beige wall behind her. And in my opinion, skin tone isolation is pretty freaking important. So, like, even though you get this crazy 16-bit super giant file out of the red, what good is all that extra color that you're supposedly getting 
if the sensor can't even see the difference between two colors that aren't the same. And this is what we filmmakers are talking about when we say things like, I love the skin tones of Canon and Blackmagic and Ari. You want to actually make sure that you're pairing your sensor or your color science to that project. That is to say, when you're in a position where you can actually rent the cameras you need or want for the productions you're doing. So if you do a lot of green screen stuff, maybe you want to shoot with a Sony that has a bit more of a green bias or shoot with a red that has this super low compression giant 16-bit file. If you're doing a lot more narrative stuff that's in the field and the skin tones are super important and subtle gradations of those reds, magentas, and slight variations in skin tone, maybe something along the lines of Canon Blackmagic or Ari is better for you. Now, not everyone can afford an Ari, obviously, but these are the things that you need to keep in mind while you're figuring out what camera you want to work with. You always want to shoot a larger amount of data to the top of the pipeline, the funnel of information, and you want to actually bring that down throughout your post process. So if you're going to be kicking out 8-bit content for web, you want to shoot at least 10-bit. If you're shooting to do 10-bit content for a really high-quality cinema release, or you're using a really high-quality monitor, or you're even showing someone in a private screening, you want to be shooting 12-bit or higher. Now, do we need 16-bit in a world where you can capture 16-bit in a 12-bit container? I would say no. But then someone will tell you you don't need 10-bit either. It really just depends on who you're talking to, and it depends on what your workflow is. So what's the final takeaway? Well, if you are a total data junkie and you're working with some crazy post pipelines and you just love the brand name, obviously go with red. Also, if you're shooting super modern stuff, you want to look really digital and really, you know, just like high, like almost CGI, like get the red look. I mean, there's nothing that quite looks like red looks. And if you want that super digital, super modern look, that's the sensor to go with. But don't necessarily pick it just because of 16 bit color. If you're trying to shoot something a little more budget friendly, you want to work with a more efficient codec because let's face it, Red Raw and ProRes are freaking old. You could go with a newer codec that's a bit more efficient, certainly better designed, and works seamlessly with the Resolve workflow for those of us who are on Resolve currently. And last but not least, you do want to always, always create a 10-bit master file when you're finished with your work. If you're shooting in 12-bit or 16-bit, if that's your preference, you will want to make sure that once you're finished with your color, once you're finished with your edit, go ahead and save a ProRes 422 or HQ, or if you're on a Windows machine and you don't want to work with ProRes, you can save a DNxHR, same deal, a 10-bit HQX. You can save a master file that has good color data that will survive being reopened, being recompressed, and being re-exported. From there, you can create your 8-bit MP4s, your H.265s, send them off in emails, put them on the cloud, whatever have you. But it is worth noting, you can actually upload things like DNxHR directly to YouTube, and it will compress it from there for you. So other than upload speeds, you honestly can pretty much operate entirely in a 10-bit workflow, starting with 12 or higher bit data, and then let the internet services bring things down to 8-bit where they need to for people to view from home. Now, you may have noticed that this video looks a little bit different than the other ones that I've uploaded, and that's because I'm filming on a 2x anamorphic right now. Of course, it's cropped for 16.9 because that is formatted to fit your screen, like those old VHS tapes, for those of us who remember that. And I am putting together a video that will be everything about why you really want to shoot anamorphic, why it's special beyond just blue lens flares and oval bokeh. So stick around, check out that video on my channel. I'll also be doing a super granular breakdown for those of you who are interested on the entire set of anamorphic lenses that I have with me to actually do these tests. So hang out, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, do the liking and the share the thing and comment below if you want to know anything else in particular from me. And if there's anything else you want, again, as always, I'm here for you guys. So definitely ask for any content that you have not seen on this channel in the comment section below. I do take the time to respond to literally everyone, even if all you have for me is feedback about what you think about this video and my channel. So all are welcome. I look forward to hearing from you guys and I will see you guys next time.